Hey there everybody, Mr. D here, and in this video we're going to be talking about rational exponents. Again, rational, this word here typically means we have something written in fraction form. So it's going to have a numerator and a denominator in exponents. So before we get too far into it, let's go ahead and just kind of recap our properties that we've already discussed with exponents. And we're going to do this now using rational exponents to kind of get our brains wrapped around the whole concept of dealing with fractions, whether we're multiplying, adding, subtracting. So first one, we've got 7x to the power of 1 third times 2x to the power of 1 fourth. So when we do these, I'm seeing the base x written twice, which means I need to add those exponents together. So I'm going to have 1 third plus 1 fourth. Now hopefully we remember in order to add our fractions we need to have common denominators so one third is really four twelfths and one fourth would be three twelfths. So now that they have the common denominator of twelve we add the numerator straight across so four plus three that's going to give us seven twelfths. So that's going to be my new exponent here. With regard to the constant numbers out front the seven and the 2, we just multiply those together. So we're going to have 14x to the power of 7 twelfths. Next one, number 4. Very similar, but now we're going to switch up the exponent properties here. We have 72x to the power of 3 fourths divided by 9x to the power of 1 third. So for these, Anytime we are dividing exponential expressions with the same base, in this case x, we need to subtract those exponents. So we're going to figure out what is 3 fourths minus 1 third. Well, just like we were adding, we need to find common denominators. Again, this common denominator is going to be a 12. So 3 fourths is really the same as 9 twelfths, and 1 third is 4 twelfths. When we do that subtraction, we'll get 5 twelfths as our new exponent. So that takes care of the x's. Now what's going on with the numbers out front, these coefficients here? Well, 72 over 9, if I think of that just as a fraction, or even as a division problem, 72 divided by 9, well, that becomes 8. And after we divided out our x values and subtract those exponents, we got our new exponent of 5 twelfths. Now since this 5 twelfths result was positive, I know that that gets to stay up in the numerator. If when we, we did the subtraction we got a negative 5 twelfths, then we'd have to flip that x down to the denominator. All right, last one. We have 2y to the 1 fifth raised to the fourth power all over y to the 3 tenths. Now this one will be similar in the sense that we have to subtract these exponents. However, before we do that, we need to bring in this 4 onto every exponent inside those parentheses. Big common mistake some folks will make is they'll forget that this 2 has an exponent of 1. So let's go ahead and rewrite this with the new numerator. So this will be 2 to the 4th, y to the 4 fifths, all over y to the 3 tenths. Just like we did before, we're going to subtract those exponents. So 4 fifths minus 3 tenths, we need common denominators. So I'm going to change that 4 fifths to an 8 tenths. So 8 tenths minus 3 tenths is 5 tenths, which is also 1 half. So now we have 2 to the 4th power times y to the power of 1 half. Well, we know 2 to the 4th power. 2 to the 4th power is just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So it's going to be 16y to the 1 half. All right, so now let's start kind of unpacking what do these rational exponents mean? What do these little fraction exponents mean in the, in the grand scheme of things? Here's the general concept. Anytime you have a rational exponent. The denominator of that exponent is the index of the radical on that base. So if I have a to the 1 nth power, that's considered me taking the nth root. 
of something. Now, if my rational exponent has a numerator, here we have m and n, the nth root still holds true. But whatever this exponent is, that kind of goes onto the base or it can go off to the side outside of the radical as well. It's kind of up to the, the, the user how they want to do it. So here I have an example of 8 to the power of 2 thirds. Well, I know that 3 is going to represent the index of the radical. 2 is going to be the exponent. So I'll have a 2. Now remember, this 2 can go inside or outside, doesn't matter. Then we're going to have the base, which is 8. So me personally, I typically like to put the exponent out here. I find that it's easier for me to deal with smaller numbers. You could put the exponent here and say, OK, 8 squared is 64, and find the third root of that. That's fine. But me personally, I prefer to have that exponent off to the side. Either way, we'll get you the correct answer. So if I wanted the third root of 8, I'm really trying to figure out what number to the third power is 8. Well, that number would be 2. So now we have 2 to the second power. All right, and that second power just came down from up here. That would equate to 4. Let's see a few more here. So we're going to simplify each expression. We're going to do this without a calculator. All right, first one, we have 64 to the power of 1 half. This would be the square root. Square roots technically have an index of 2. However, it's a plain old square root. We very rarely write that. Uh, the square root of 64 raised to the first power. So that would just be 8. Number 25, 125 raised to the 1 third power. So I want the third root of 125 raised to the first power. Well, what number times itself three times? What number cubed is 125? That number would be 5. Negative 64 to the 1 third. Now, anytime we're dealing with negatives on the base, you have to pay close attention. Is this negative contained within a set of parentheses, or is the negative outside kind of floating around by itself? In this case, the negative is inside of parentheses, so that means when we write the radical, the negative is tucked underneath that radical symbol. So we're going to have the square root of negative 64, or sorry, not square root, cubed root of negative 64. So we have an index of 3, the denominator is the index, all raised to the first power. So what times itself three times, or what cubed is negative 64? That would be 4. Actually, negative 4. Next one, 25 to the power of 3 halves. So the index on the radical is a 2. And then we have a 3 hanging outside. Now this is a prime example of why I prefer to put this exponent kind of outside the radical instead of directly tucked onto this number would be called the radicand. Because I'm not going to lie, if I don't have a calculator, I don't know what 25 to the third power is. Don't feel like doing that. Also, I don't know what the square root of that result would be. But I do know the square root of 25 is 5. So this is just 5 to the third power. And that's 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. All right, let's see a few more. We want to simplify again without a calculator. Uh, number five here. This negative is not tucked into parentheses with the nine, so it's going to kind of be free float, do its own, doing its own thing. Since it's not tucked in to parentheses, it's going to be off to the side doing its own thing. So this is negative square root of nine to the third power. Well, the square root of 9 is 3 to the third power. And 3 to the third power is 27, so this is negative 27. Next one, 4 to the negative 5 halves. Well, negative exponents means we have to flip and throw our base now in the denominator of a fraction. So essentially, we're doing the reciprocal of that term. 
The only thing that changes when I do that is the exponent goes from negative to positive. I'm not flipping around the exponent. I'm not changing the base, positive or negative. It just changes location and changes sign, positive to negative. So now as we simplify, this would be 1 over the square root of 4 to the fifth power, which is 1 over 2 to the fifth power. And 2 to the fifth power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Well, I know 2 to the fourth is 16, so that means one more 2 thrown in there would be 32. Next, we have 16 to the negative 3 fourths. Same thing. Let's put that underneath a fraction, so that way we can write it as a positive 3 fourths. Once we have a positive rational, we can go ahead and throw that into radical form. So I want the fourth root of 16. Well, that would be 2. So this is 1 over 2 to the third power, and that's going to be 1 over 8. Last one, kind of similar. 32 to the negative 4 fifths. So it would be 1 over 32 to the positive 4 fifths, which is 1 over the fifth root of 32 to the fourth power, which is 1 over 2 to the fourth power, because the fifth root of 32 would be 2. And 2 to the fourth is 16. So 1 16th is our answer there. So with these problems, we kind of took what we knew about negative exponents and combined them with what we've just learned about rational exponents, and we're able to rewrite these using radicals and evaluate them without a calculator. In fact, using a calculator might even slow us down. All right, now we're just going to get into rewriting some of these. We're going to rewrite from rational exponents into radicals, and then we'll go from radicals into rational exponents. So these ones are going to go relatively quickly. Again, if you need to pause the video to write these down, you are more than welcome to do so. Just as a reminder, your denominator will always determine the index on the radical. The numerator will be the exponent on the outside. So x to the 1 -sixth power is the sixth root of x raised to the first, where my index was a 6 and the exponent was that 1 x to the 2 sevenths would be the seventh root of x squared. x to the negative 9 eighth, that's 1 over x to the 9 eighth, which means 1 over the eighth root of x to the ninth power. And then number 4 might be tripping up some of us. Number four is x to the 1.5 power. Hmm. 1.5 power. Well, I need the, to write 1.5 as some sort of a fraction with a numerator and a denominator. Well, the way I could think of this is, I know 1.5, I could throw a 1 underneath that. 1.5 is not a whole number. It's not an integer. But if I doubled it, I could make it an integer, but whatever I do to the top, I'd have to do to the bottom as well. So if I doubled the top, I'd get a 3. If I doubled the bottom, I'd get a 2. So this is really x to the 3 halves power, which would be the square root of x cubed. All right, now into the home stretch. Starting from exponential form, or sorry, radical form, going to exponential form. Quick little reminder, anytime you see a radical without an index, you can assume that there's a 2 there. So a plain old square root. These index values will determine the denominator of our exponents. So I know that the first one's going to have a denominator of 2, the second one's going to have a denominator of 3, third one with a denominator of 4. So I can kind of fill in as I go like that. Now my bases can get plugged in to all of these as well. 
And the numerators for all of these will be whatever the exponents were on the outside. Now remember, we talked about earlier, this exponent might be off to the side of the radical, might be tucked inside, it doesn't matter. Whatever that exponent the base is being raised to, that radicand is being raised to, will become the numerator. So here we have a 3, this would be a 2, 2, and a 6. Only thing left for us to do, and this doesn't always happen, but there are some scenarios in which maybe we have to simplify fractions. So for instance, 2 fourths and 6 thirds. We could write that as x to the 1 half, just simplifying that fraction down. Or 5xy, oops, to the second power. So there are other ways that we could simplify that. All right, that is it for this video. You know the drill, folks. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. And as always, good luck, have fun, be safe, roll tide.